gives in and says yes to our Lord. So let us all give in this morning and say yes to our Lord as we stand and we sing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, as we gather to celebrate the love of God in the person of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Lord invites us to open our hearts for His healing and love as we let us open our hearts as we acknowledge our sins. I confess to Almighty God I confess to Almighty God And to you, my brothers and sisters And to you, my brothers and sisters That I have greatly sinned That I have greatly sinned In my thoughts and in my words In my thoughts and in my words In what I have done In what I have done And in what I have failed to do and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin. All the angels and saints. All the angels and saints. And you, my brothers and sisters. And you, my brothers and sisters. To pray for me, to pray for me, to the Lord our God, to, to the, the Lord, Lord our God. Kyrie, Kyrie, eleison. Kyrie, Kyrie, eleison. Christ eleison. Christ eleison. Kyrie, Kyrie, eleison. And may Almighty God have mercy on us and forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray.
O oh God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, in their thirst for water, the people grumbled against Moses, saying, Why did you ever make us leave Egypt? Was it just to have us die here of thirst with our children and our livestock? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? A little more, and they will stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Go over there, in front of the people, along with some of the elders of Israel, holding in your hand as you go the staff with which you struck the river. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock in Horeb. Strike the rock, and the water will flow from it for the people to drink. This Moses did in the presence of the elders of Israel. The place was called Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled there and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord in our midst or not? The word of the Lord. Today you hear God's voice. If today you hear God's voice, harden not your hearts. Harden not your hearts. If Today you hear God's voice. 
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have gained access to faith, to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in hope of the glory of God. And hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person. Though perhaps for a good person, why one might not even find courage to die. But God proves his love for us. In what, while we were still sinners, Christ died for all of us. The word of the Lord. and honor to you, Lord Jesus, praise and honor to you. From the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of land that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus, tired from his journey, sat down there at the well. It was about noon. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. And Jesus said to her, give me a drink. His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, how can you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? 
for Jews use nothing in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you do not even have a bucket, and the cistern is deep. Where then can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this cistern and drank from it himself with his children and his flocks? Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water that I shall give will never thirst. The water I shall give will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. And the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may not be thirsty or have to keep coming to here to draw water. I can see you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but the people say that the place to worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, the hour is coming and when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain or in Jerusalem. Your people worship what you do not understand. We worship what we understand because salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is here now when worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. And indeed, the Father seeks such people to worship him. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, the one called the Christ, and when he comes, he will tell us everything. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking with you. Many of the Samaritans of that town began to believe in him. When the Samaritans came to him, they invited him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. Many more began to believe in him because of his word, and they said to the woman, We no longer believe because of your word, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Gospel presents us today a powerful encounter between Jesus and the Samaritan woman. I thought, uh, you know, if we see this visually, it will be more uh, impactful and understanding. So I'm going to show a video for us to watch. Uh, let's watch this video. Give me a drink. Did you hear me? That's bad, huh? What? You, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a Samaritan, and a woman. I'm sorry. I should have said please. You know, it's not safe for you to be alone out here. Nor you. Why haven't you come with others? Why so late in the day? Don't women come to the wells in the, the cool of the morning? Yeah, well, none of them will be seen with me, so I have to come out now in the heat. So you have so kindly reminded me. Why won't they be seen with you? Long story. I, I'd still like a drink of water if you can spare it. Amazing what a parched throat will do. Aren't I unclean to you? Won't you be defiled by this vessel? Maybe some of my people say that about your women, but I don't. Yeah? And what do you say? I say if you knew who I am, you'd be asking me for a drink. Really? 
and I would give you living water. Wood. Except that you have nothing to draw water with, and this is a deep well. Besides, what do you need from me if you have your own supply of living water? Wrong story. But Jewish water is better than Samaritan water. Hmm? That's not what I said. Are you a better man than our ancestor Jacob, who dug this well? Your water is better than his? I know Jacob. And everyone who drinks this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks the water that I give him will never be thirsty again. Wouldn't that be nice? The water I give will become in a person a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Really? Yes, really. Prove it. First, go and call your husband and come back. I will show you both. I don't have a husband. You are right. You've had five husbands. And the man you're living with now is not your husband. <laughs> oh, I see. You're a prophet. You're here to preach at me. No. Usually the one good thing about coming here alone is I can escape being condemned. I'm not here to condemn you. I've made mistakes. Too many. But it's men like you who have made it impossible for me to do anything about it. How? Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain. But you Jews insist Jerusalem is the only place for true worship. They say that because the temple is there. Yeah. Exactly where we're not allowed. I'm here to break those barriers. And the time is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. So, where am I supposed to go when I need God? I've never received anything from God, but I couldn't thank him even if I did. Anywhere. God is spirit. And the time is coming and is now here. That it won't matter where you worship, but only that you do it in spirit and truth. Heart and mind, that, that is the kind of worshiper he's looking for. It won't matter where you're from or what you've done. Do you believe what I'm telling you? Until the Messiah comes and explains everything and sorts this mess out, including me, I don't trust in anyone. You're wrong when you say that you've never received anything from God. This Messiah you speak of, I am he. The first one was named Ramin. You were a woman of purity who was excited to be married. But he wasn't a good man. He hurt you. And it made you question marriage and even the practice of your faith. Stop it. The second was Farzad. On your wedding night, his skin smelled like oranges. And to this day, every time you pass by the oranges in the market, you feel guilty for leaving him because he was the only truly godly man you've been with. But you felt unworthy. Why are you doing this? I have not revealed myself to the public as the Messiah. You are the first. It would be good if you believed me. You picked the wrong person. I came to Samaria just to meet you. <laughs> Do you think it's an accident that I'm, I'm here in the middle of the day? I am rejected by others. I know, but not by the Messiah. And you know these things because you are the Christ. I'm going to tell everyone. I was counting on it. <laughs> 
Spirit and truth. Spirit and truth. It won't be all about mountains or temples. Soon, just the heart. <laughs> you promise? I promise. This man told me everything I've done. Oh, he must be the Christ! <laughs> What you forgot your um Foxy, a man who told me everything I ever did. <laughs> um, Rabbi, we got food. What would you like? Ah. I have food to eat that you do not know about. Who got you food? I hope you'll take some time today to kind of reflect on this uh, beautiful video. Uh, I would like to just highlight some of this. Uh, this is a story of a disciples' faith experience. Uh, that's what it is all about. Our Lenten journey is all about the ongoing conversion. I believe that in my own life, I feel that there are some parts of my life that needs healing, uh, reconciliation, and uh, conversion, a change so that I can look at the same world. At times, when we look at this world today that we live in, uh, we see so much evil, so much bad things that is happening. So it can be really discouraging. But once I feel that my life is changing, the way that I can look at the world could be really totally different. I can see the world with the new lenses of eyes where I can see so much goodness, so much uh, holiness, so much uh, beauty of God that is totally present. So for all of us, there are two ways that I would suggest from this uh, powerful encounter. Uh, that one is that uh, this woman represents all those that I believe that all of us know somebody in our life, or we ourselves are in a place where we are hurting, maybe physically or spiritually or mentally or you know, financially. Uh, so that doesn't allow us, we don't find a freedom we don't find the liberation to be who we are as God created us to be. So like the woman who confronts her own brokenness and sinfulness and uh, finally opens herself to the forgiveness of our Lord, and then she is able to see that uh, though sin is a reality, uh, out there in our Lord, there is a reconciliation, there is forgiveness, there is liberation, there is freedom, and she, she opens herself to that, and then she's able to walk in that she is able to experience the living water that Jesus says would well up and to, to lead us to a, a eternal life, to participate in divine life. So if we find ourselves in that similar situation, maybe it's time that we need to open our hearts for God's uh, mercy and forgiveness so that we can walk in freedom, walk uh, in that place where we are so feel liberated and can bring people to that experience of liberation in God. Or if we feel that we are in a healthy place, maybe it's time that we, we go and uh, show what our Lord showed us, just a compassion, love, unconditional love. Sometimes what happens is like when I, you know, often uh, for me, I speak for myself, when I hear, uh, look at the uh, some social media or hear the news that talk about somebody committed a, a very serious grave crime or something that is bad, evil, uh, right away, my mind goes to judge that person. Oh, that is so evil. How can somebody... So that's what, you know, a judging mind. Uh, but our Lord is inviting us to, instead of being a judge, uh, to show compassion, to show love, to, to show acceptance. So that would give the person who has committed a crime or evil an opportunity to change, to experience mercy and forgiveness and walk in that place of freedom and liberation. So what, what a powerful story. So I, I would invite you to, to see that so that we can, we can participate in divine life, that God continues to invite us, especially during the season of Lent, uh, that where we are called to look inward and see what parts of our being need uh, to be filled with compassion and kindness and mercy of God.
Please stand as we profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. In our search for living water, we bring our needs and our prayers before our Father in heaven. For our church, that it may be a source of living water for all those who thirst for meaning and purpose in their lives, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the leaders of the world, that they may prioritize bringing food to the hungry, sources of water to those who have limited access of water, and continue to protect the water and clean water in their communities and nations, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For us, the people of Holy Apostles, that we may continue our openness to the Word of God by carefully listening to the scriptures, pondering them in our hearts, and acting on what Christ is telling us in the Word. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who thirst for the water of life, the unborn children, the terminally ill, the marginalized, and the oppressed, may they be set free and embraced in love by all people, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, that as he celebrates 10 years as Bishop of Rome, God will gift him with health in mind and body, continue to bless his efforts to show God's mercy and compassion to all, and inspire him as he leads the church to greater unity and deeper love, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. For those intentions in our book of prayer and for all those who have promised that we have promised to pray for, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For Elaine Schmidt, Dolores Slain, Robert Holenbach, Mary Gleitzner, Marian Trost, Rosemary Schultz, Paul Wassenberg, and Raymond Dwyer, who have died, and for their families, and for Alvin Boyd, Judy Kern, and the people of Holy Apostles, who we remember in a special way, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, you do not disappoint those who seek and hope in you. Increase our hope and answer our prayers. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the grace and glory of God's name, for our good and of all God's holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For when he asked the Samaritan woman for water to drink, he had already created the gift of faith within her. And so ardently that he thirsts for her faith, that he kindled in her the fire of divine love. And so, we too give you thanks, and with all the angels and saints, praise your mighty deeds as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and he entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. Profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Jerome our Bishop, and all the bishops under your entire people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
எல்லா பூகழோ மாட்சியும் என்றென்றும் உமக்கு உரியதே Deliver us, Lord, we pray, pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Let us now offer each other a sign of God's peace and love. Behold our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, roof but only say the, the word, so shall be.
Look over yonder, what do I see? God's gonna trouble the water. Will the Holy Ghost are coming on me? God's gonna trouble the water. Oh, children, Touche. 
shelter your name. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all the many sponsors, volunteers, and guests for a wonderful evening of fellowship at the auction dinner on January 28th, and for the amazing generosity of support to our parish and school. Also, thanks, uh, thank you for the outpouring of donations to support the Elizabeth Ministry Baby Shower. Uh, please read the bulletin to learn more about the success of these events that continue to reflect the caring and generosity of our parish community. So thanks to uh, all of you who participate in parish life. Uh, there is a great opportunity for our faith community to come together to contemplate on the passion of our Lord on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. with the Stations of the Cross. And uh, if you are uh, not a parish member, would like to explore being a new member of the parish and to learn more about the parish, you are welcome to join uh, Terry Ingsberg in the Welcome Center after Mass today. I now invite those bringing communion to the homebound to please stand. Loving Father, we thank you for the gift of your Son nourishing our body and spirit. We send these, our brothers and sisters, to those who cannot be here with us today, but continue to long for your Son in the Eucharist. As they receive your Son in the Eucharist, may they experience your healing and loving presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace and share the word about the living water of our Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
Your steel the garden, your steel the sun.